Uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, very summary, very briefly, inshallah, today we have only one ayah and one hadith. The first khutbah will be one ayah, and then the second khutbah, inshallah, we will summarize the one hadith. Uh, the one ayah, subhanAllah, Allah is so wonderful, He summarized the whole entire Islamic religion in one verse of the Holy Quran. The verse of the Holy Quran is Quran chapter 2, verses 177. Quran chapter 2, Surah Al Baqarah. The ayah is 177. Allah has summarized the whole entire Quran, the, the Islamic religion, in this verse, in this ayah. What may be that ayah? Allah has said in the Holy Quran, and I quote, birra والموفون بأهله إذا آهلوا والصابرين في البأساء والضراء وحين البأس أولئك الذين صدقوا وأولئك هم المتقون. What was this powerful verses of the Holy Quran talking about? Allah has said the piety, the fairness of Allah. It's not limited to turning your face towards the east and the west. And briefly, the Salaam of Rasul of this ayah, because Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was looking up and down because when the Islam started, we used to make the Salah to Bait al -Bukadis. But Rasul, for some reason, he was looking up to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, looking back and forth, so Allah can change the direction to al kaaba that is the Salah of Nusul. But this is not what we are concentrating on here. But uh, when Allah, one day Allah gave the instruction, and said this ayah that, okay, from now on, everybody, when you make Salah, you should look to Makkah, al kaaba instead of looking at the Bait al But what are we trying to say here? How come Allah will summarize the whole entire religion, Islamic religion, in one verse? Very, very interesting. If we go right now and we want to go to eat in detail, trust me, this good part is not even enough for that. But uh, we will just hit the base little by little. If Allah has spared our life for another good part, inshallah, we will give the detail. Allah has said the pioneers is not limited to look east or west. But what is the pioneers? The pioneers to share Allah, to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is to have faith to, to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you guys know what we talk about, believe in Allah. You believe in Allah, that He created you, He created the universe, so therefore whatever He asks you to do, you do it. That's why they call you believe in Allah. But you cannot say we are above lip service, you say you believe in Allah, where Allah has said, Atiwu Allah wa atiwu Rasula. Allah has said, obey me. Whatever I want you to do, you do it. Allah has said, pray salat. You don't have time to make salat. Allah has said, whatever you do, Allah has said, don't do this. You say you do it. All your actions tell me you keep doing it. So that means you don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, when you will act, the pietness is not limited. One of the pietness is to believe in the human act. If you know that, Life is going to be limited. One day, we all going to die. The whole human being you see on earth, everybody going to die one day. And then there is, there is called the day of reckoning. And there's some people call it the day of human being. So that day, each and every one of us will stay in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we will give account to what we did. Trust me. No matter how notorious you are, 
no matter how disobedient you are, if you know that one day I'm going to depart this world, we all know we're going to die anyway. We know that because people are dying every day. People, nobody here will raise their finger right now that nobody died from you. People die every day. If you die, your uncle, your brother, your father, your, you know, like a majority, all of them gone. And besides that, every now and then we hear somebody pass away, particularly with the social media. All right? And then you know that there is a judgment day. So therefore, you will believe, if you believe in the Yom Kiyama, if you believe in Allah and you believe in the judgment day, Allah, you will do the right thing. May Allah make it easy for us to do the right thing. And when Malaika, you should believe in angels. Angels, they are wonderful people. They are wonderful angels, they are wonderful creatures. They are duty. Allah has made them. They only do what Allah has asked them to do. That's how Allah has created them. They are not like a human being. They are not like a jinn. Because we, the human and jinn, we just obey Allah sometimes. Sometimes we obey Allah. But for the angels, they are not disobeying Allah at all. Whatever Allah asks them to do, that's what they do. So you have to believe in Egypt. Well, Kitab, the most powerful books that we have, that we know, are Tawrat, well, Injil, well, Quran. These are the three scriptures uh, we know about. So we should believe in all of them. You will not say because I'm a Muslim, so I don't believe in the true teaching of the Bible. The true teaching, not a fake one. The Quran revealed to, 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 to Bani Israel in Aramaic. It didn't say it in English, it didn't, it didn't say it in, in, in Greek, but when the religion moved from what Sinai Isa was living to what is called right now Greece, they started interpreting the Bible to suit their culture. Trust me, 50, 60 years ago, the true, true Christian, they used to dress like a Muslim woman. But now they look at what they're doing. They would dress, dress mini skirt, they would dress any kind, of, any kind of way and go to the church they said to worship your Allah. But when I was a kid, I saw the true Christian, the, the, the Christian, the Nasara, those who I saw when I was coming off, these are the people that the women that you should dress so because they were following the remaining of the teaching of the real Bible was still exist. We have to believe in all the, the books. And then we have to believe all the prophets and I mean the, the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the difference between us and them. I mean I'm a Muslim, but I love Saint Isa, I love Jesus, and I believe in Jesus. I don't believe Jesus to be my God. I believe in Jesus to be the prophet of Allah. He's a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not calling Jesus to be my God. No, I'm not doing that. So if you are a true Muslim, you have to believe in Egypt. I mean, M M Moses. You have to believe in Jesus. You have to believe in all the messengers and the prophet that came before the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why I make you a Muslim. And then, if you want to be a true Muslim, Allah has said, If you want to be a dedicated, a true Muslim, you have to give the money. That's why the law, we, we, as a human nature, we love money. Everybody loves money. That's why the law of money, but yesterday you spend it in the course of Allah. You spend all your key, key folks. Your family member, my cousin, my nephew, my brother, my nephew. If Allah gave you more money, you spend on them. That will make you a Muslim. And then the orphan children. You live in a community, some people they lost their parents, and there's nobody there to kill after them. You take your hard money, you spend on them. That's what make you a real Muslim. But when you are God, you are God in full. You have enough food for yourself. You have a shelter that can able to accommodate you. You have a roof on top of your head, but you know your neighbor, who was you, you are living in the sea neighborhood, or you all know him in the community. Allah had took him away, but here he is, there's a widow. His wife, poor woman widow, is living next to you, and the children are there struggling, and then you have a lot of money, and you don't want to help them. That means you are that you don't have the real iman yet. If you have the true iman, 
you will go spend and help some of those children according to your income. And then the poor people, poor, we have a poor people in every community since the creation of this world of the earth. Some people have, some people they don't have. Some people are struggling to even get anything to sustain them in their family. So you, if you are a dedicated Muslim, you have to spend your money in to help the poor people. And then wayfarer, somebody traveling to New York, coming from Washington DC, but for some reason, he got caught up, maybe he lost his wallet, he lost something, all his credit card lost, all his debit card get lost, he had no means, he come to you, he said, brother, this is the problem that I'm facing right now. But like, salamu this is the problem. I'm not lying to you, I traveling to New York, but for some reason, you know, some people attack me, they took my stuff from me, but like, as a good Muslim, I mean, maybe we have a bad people, if I can lie to you or something like that, but if you investigate, that they're talking through, you have to spend on them, that will make you a good Muslim. What's that in it? Some people are there, wallahi, they made all the effort to be somebody good, but it didn't work for them. So they are there begging. Some people, the poor, they don't want to beg. When you're in the community, if you know the poor, go help them. But some people there, they have no other option just to go back. They have to go back. So when you see somebody begging you, all of us, we have dignity. I respect myself. If you see me crushing my dignity and go tell you, please, my brother, help me. I'm going through something. If you have, please help that brother. That will make you a good Muslim. What if you wake up? If you, there is a, a slave that you know, Alhamdulillah, we don't have a slave like that. But if you know someone who is in jail because of some financial problem or something like that, not a criminal, but for financial something, and all he needs just to pay the money to get him out of jail, go and go free him. And then Allah has said, wa atala salata wa atala zakat. Five daily prayer, please do it uh, on time. And then if Allah gave you, Allah has given you more money, make zakat. A lot of people here, they have a businesses, two, three, four, five years, they don't even make zakat. They don't even know if you so somebody needs to give zakat. Give zakat. If Allah has given you money, and one year pass over it, and then it reached the swap, you have to make a zakat. One more food and be ahadihi. If you want to be a real good Muslim, if you promise it, 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 anybody to do something, or you promise the best that you're going to give money, if you promise somebody that you're going to send the person to Mecca, if you promise somebody that you're going to do anything for the person, make sure you fulfill that promise. Allah has said, You know, of course, no fire behind you. If you don't want to do anything, don't promise. But as soon as it comes from your mouth and you promise, Allah has said, Yom al-Qiyamah, when you go stay in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will ask you, what happened you did not fulfill that promise that you promised? <laughs> and then the patient minded people. If you want to be a dedicated Muslim, you want to be a true Muslim, you should be patient when there is a calamity before on you. The poverty or illness, you get sick. Or even time for fighting. The enemies of Islam attack Islam and then it's time for you, the Imam Paul, or the, the Islamic leaders as you say, oh, we have to go defend Islam. Then you be patient. You know, when you go to the front, you're going to go die. But you be patient with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You go there and then you survive or you die. You, you, you be patient for that. So that makes you a good Muslim. Uh, Allah has said, if those who do that, what are going to happen? What are they going to get? Allah has said, These are the truthful Muslims. And these are the people, Allah has described them that they are the pious people. May Allah has made all of us the pious people. Barakallahu uh, alayhi wa lakum fil Quran al-Kareem wa fi sunnat al-Nabihi al-Mutahara wa ja'alani wa iyaakum bidman yastadun al-Qawla fa yatabiun al-Ahsanahu aqulu ma sami'atun wa astaghfirullah alayhi wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-Muslimin wa li muslimat bin kul zan فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى uh, Very briefly, this, this, uh, the hadith that we have for today's khutbah very, is a very popular hadith it was narrated by Umar ibn Khattab, 
Salim Khalifa al Rashidi. He said, one day, you know, that the Sahaba, they were sitting there around Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Out of nowhere, there was a gentleman who appeared from nowhere, from blue sky, just came. But this man, nobody knew him in Medina. Nobody knew him. He wearing the whitest, the, 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 the clothes he's wearing is too white. And then his hair is dark black. And then this man, you don't see no sign of traveling. Like, you know, like when I come from out of town, like those days people travel, travel with camel, you know, donkey and so on and so forth. There is no dust on him, nothing. He looking clean. So this man won't walk straight to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and kneel down. It make him kneel to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and put his hand on the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam thigh and ask Rasul. <coughs> he asked Rasul, Rasul, please inform me what is the Islam? Rasul said, Al Islam, Al Tashar Al La Ilaha Illallah. وأنا محمد رسول الله وتقيم الصلاة وتؤتي الزكاة وتصوم رمضان وتهوت البيت من الصلاة إليه سبيل رسول ما هو الإسلام؟ Trust me, we all need to know this. We have to know the what is the Islam is. So when he asked Rasul what is Islam, Rasul told him that Islam is that you should bear with it that there is no God but Allah and the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is his messenger. And we all have to put that at the back of our mind. You can't call yourself Muslim when non-Muslim or someone who want to inquire about the Islam religion asks you, what is the Islam? You don't even know how to answer it. You know, uh, because of the weather condition, Alhamdulillah, inshallah, we're going to stop right there. If Allah had spared our life, we get no chance to another Qutbah, we're going to complete. This is a law hadith. He asked Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi about Islam. He asked Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi about Iman. He asked Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi about Ihsan. And then he asked Rasul Sallallahu about the judgment day. So we will give the detail about that if Allah spare our life to see another Jummah. Allahumma ini da'inu fa'aminu. Allahumma la tada'alana fi maqabila haza zanba illa lafarta. Wa la hamma illa faraytahu. Wa la daylan illa qadaytahu. Wa la asira illa yasaktahu. Allahumma aghfir lana wa liikwalina al-lazina sabakuna bin iman. ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم وقوم لصلاتكم يرحمني ويرحمكم